Welcome. My name is Neil O'Connor, the Head of Accounting and Finance Discipline here at Monash University. And I'm here to welcome you to the FinTech unit that we have designed just for you. It is an elective and we hope that you will value and cherish what we're going to teach you over the next 12 weeks. I'm here to present to you the first week and I'm going to lay the foundation from which we will build upon week on week for the next 12 weeks. Look at all these fintech startups that are peeking away at the low hanging fruit of the big banks. Even in Europe, you've got all these startups that are picking away at the low hanging fruit or different areas. Is there some way that we can make some kind of framework in some way that we can understand what is going on in the world of fintech. Yes, there is. We have this World Economic Forum framework that we're going to use as a platform for this course. There are six areas that we're going to cover. Plus, we will cover another area called cybersecurity later in the semester. Today, I'm going to cover two of these six components of the World Economic Forum Framework. So if you will fasten your seatbelts and come on for this ride with me, I want to present to you right now in this first of three parts, the things that we need to know about deposits and lending and the insurance space of FinTech. Deposits and lending. Grab your PowerPoint slides because you're going to go with me on this. There's our wheel of disruption, and let's start disrupting all of those financial institutions. Deposits and lending. Okay, how many of you know about credit scoring? This is the big thing that occurs in banks. They have to score the credit of customers who come to the bank asking for a loan. And back in 1989, the FICO score was introduced and that was called Fair, Isaac and Company. So FICO is short for that. So whenever you go into a bank, especially in the USA, they will look to this FICO score to find out about well, who is this person and what is your ability to repay. And what is interesting about this lending model is they've always focused on Okay, what is your payment history? What is the amount of debt you have? What is the length of credit history? And what about new credit? And what credit mix do you currently have? Wow. So that's the traditional lending model. We will score your credit if you come and ask me for a loan. What about Capital One? Who is Capital One? Back in 1994, they were the 350th largest bank in the world. In other words, very, very small. What about today? They are the largest. Actually, they're the largest credit card issuing bank in the world. How did they get from 350th to the largest today? It was through this whole idea of big data. What happened in the late 90s and the 2000s, Capital One decided to give out credit cards to people that banks would never ever lend money to. And what happened is some of those people defaulted on credit cards. And some ways, when you look on the balance sheet of Capital One, those defaults turn up as liabilities. Those defaults turn up as bad debts. Yes, and you're thinking, what type of business model was that? Well, Capital One viewed those same people that they were giving away credit cards to as research and development. Amazing. All this time, the last two and a half decades, they were undertaking research and development. And as you can see from this graph here, they've actually grown and grown and grown and now the, the largest credit card issuing company in the world. They basically, by giving out credit cards to lots of people, to students, to people that banks wouldn't loan to, 
they were collecting data. Every time they give a credit card out, that becomes a row in their database. And so when you have more and more rows of people you're lending to, you can start to do some analytics. And that's what this first section of the six part World Economic Forum framework is all about. It's all about scoring. It's all about testing and scoring. This is what Capital One did. They would give out loans to people who banks would not lend to. For example, a student who just graduated with medicine degree has got a pile of debt. Banks would never lend to that student, but Capital One saw that student and saw the future potential of that student to pay back their loan. And so what Capital One did, as I just said, is they created more rows and rows and rows of people who couldn't get loans from banks. Now, of course, a lot of those people didn't pay back their loan. They were bad debts, but that's research and development. Capital One kept on giving loans, bad debts, but some of over time, they realized they started scoring better about who they could give a loan to and who they should not give a loan to. And so all we're trying to do here is in this first of six sections is it's all about using big data to do training and scoring. What do we mean by training and scoring? Well, first of all, we get data. How do you get data? You give out loans to lots and lots of people. And then each person you give a loan to becomes another row in the database. And then you start to data mine that and then run algorithms to predict the likelihood that they will pay back a loan. And you throw in different characteristics or demographics of the people and they are the rows and you try to improve your predictability of their potential of someone to pay back a loan. And that's what big data is about. Welcome to the world of big data. Remember in this first of six sections and students would you give a loan to a student? What about other characteristics you could think of? Could you think of other characteristics? Maybe where they live. Maybe we can start to think about what Upstart does. They raise $50 million and announce new bank partnerships. And they're focusing on how to do a better scoring model with banks and actually partnering with banks to help their own loan decision making. Lending Club, Earnest, Upstart and Prosper, all of these companies have actually gotten into this lending space where they are actually saying to people out in the world, come and get a loan from us and we will lend you some money. Wow. They are in fact building a database just like what Capital One did over the last two decades. What about this? What's this here? Is this another, is this data that we can use for credit scoring? Maybe yes, maybe not. Maybe this is more applicable to insurance. As you can see here, this is my bike route that I rode in my hometown in Mildura, Victoria last year. As you can see, there's 41 kilometers. And what if this was trackable by Google? And actually it is because I used my smartwatch, I used my smartphone. And what if banks or these loan companies could get this data? What could they use that data to tell about me? Maybe it shows that, well, I care about my fitness. Maybe that becomes more important for insurance. Well, we, that we will talk about in a minute. Is there any other characteristics of people that we could use to try and determine whether they will pay back a loan? Well, the banks have gone into this notion of the big five personality and startups are starting to look at this as well. What if, if I could predict your personality, that I could use that to predict your ability to repay a loan? And that's what banks and fintech companies have experimented with in big data. 
And one of these factors that is linked to your ability to repay is actually agreeableness. If you are an agreeable person, it's more likely you will repay a loan. Now, based on that not scientific knowledge, we want to find out if someone applies for a loan, how agreeable are they? You can ask them, are you agreeable? And the person will say, yes, of course I'm agreeable. Because they know that if they say, I'm agreeable, I will get a loan. Wow, it's not that easy. People will lie to you if they know if something they say is linked to getting what they want. Ah, so is there another way to figure out how agreeable someone is? Well, people have looked at Facebook profile. They look at your Facebook profile. So watch out what you write. Maybe they're looking at LinkedIn and to find out what you love and what you hate. And maybe if you have likes for anything that is on the left hand side, that they find out is predictable of how agreeable you are by nature. And they have used machine algorithms to predict your agreeableness. And the computer's accuracy is quite high of 0.56, just a little bit less than a spouse. Now, if you're not married, well, computer's accuracy is actually higher than anything else in your world. So right now, lenders, fintechs and banks can predict based on looking at your Facebook profile profile based on other demographics, they could predict how agreeable you are already. They can do that right now. Wow. And so if they predict that, then they can use that in scoring your ability to repay a loan. All right. And so they can go into Facebook, watch out what you post into Facebook. Now, what have we got here? We have we could ask an open question. Why do you want a loan? And I can ask you right now, if you think about this, of all of these words, which ones do you think would pop up to indicate your likelihood that you will repay a loan? Remember, we're just trying to get more data. The more data we get about people, and then we link that to payback default payback default, then we can build a better prediction model to help facilitate the lending decision. And that's all we're trying to do in this first section of the World Economic Forum framework. And so what they found out that people that write minimum payment, graduate or lower interest rate or debt free are more likely to pay you back. But if they write other words, then they're less likely to pay you back. Okay, they've already ran machine algorithms, prediction models to determine which words in your answer to this question represent the likelihood that you will pay a loan back. Wow. Okay, this is what is going on already. This is not the future. This is what is happening now. Ah, wow. So we have all these small business lending platforms and these startups have so much data on individual that trumps what the banks have on you. Okay, the banks normally you go for a loan as a business, they'll ask for quarterly data. What use is quarterly data? When you go out and get dressed every morning and you want to go out, you look at the weather. Do you look at the quarterly weather report? No, you want to know what the weather is today. And the fintechs are able to get up to date information about your ability to repay a loan. And that's something that many banks are struggling to move towards. So in the future, banks and lending companies will push a button and get real time data from enterprise software of your business. There'll be no rush to do the accounting books at the end of each month. Who has access? The enterprise software companies have access. Okay, EDS, SAP, other enterprise softwares. Now, just to summarize what we're doing here is in this first part of the six part World Economic Forum framework, it's all about lending and 
the big trend over the last five to ten years was fintechs coming in and finding new ways of getting data about you and using that to predict your ability to repay a loan. And banks have been disrupted in the process.